Welcome back. By now, the world is all too aware of the atrocities of a Nigerian Muslim extremist group called Boko Haram. They rose to international notoriety for kidnapping more than 270 schoolgirls. The group's leader has used Islam to justify his actions, insisting that these captive women are slaves who can be sold and married off. And yet many Muslim scholars have condemned the group for committing acts of terrorism and distorting Islam. Has Boko Haram hijacked Islam? I'm here with Dr. Shabir Ali, President of the Islamic Information Center, to take a closer look at this group. Now, Dr. Shabir Ali, someone comes on TV and says women are slaves. How are we to respond to that? Well, women, like men, are free people, and uh, one of the great Islamic teachings is that human beings are born free, and they should not be captured uh, and, and made into slaves. Uh, it is true that in ancient societies, when tribes went to war with each other, they decimated the warrior uh, population and then took the rest of the people uh, as slaves, uh, men, women, and children. Uh, and uh, when the great religions were formulated in ancient time, including Islam, uh, naturally they adopted some of the practices of the people at the time and one of the practices was this there was no um, uh, evolved or developed system for dealing with uh, uh, um, defeated populations um, and and the general way of dealing with them was to enslave them um, but uh, Islam showed that uh, we should uh, emanci emancipate the slaves as a good act of charity for Muslims to do and in fact in some cases it is a requirement for Muslims to emancipate slaves uh, such that if uh, Muslims were to follow the dictates of uh, Islam as it is laid down eventually there would be no more slaves because you could not capture a free person outside of the context of war and uh, war had its own stipulations and limitations you could not just enter into any war it was a matter of last resort uh, and uh, you had to free slaves as a matter of uh, as a, of goodwill and uh, also uh, as a result of uh, uh, certain infractions of Islamic law which requires uh, that you free a slave to uh, atone for what you have done uh, you, you could not then go out and just simply capture uh, women as uh, it is reported that this group has done and as so they do you think what Boko Haram have has done, done is completely against Islam then? Well yes in today's context uh, to begin with if you do go to war you don't take uh, prisoners like this uh, uh, yes you will have prisoners of war but then there are international conventions now uh, that uh, are a benefit to everyone Muslims and non-Muslims and these conventions uh, ensure that uh, prisoners of war must be uh, treated as human beings and must be given uh, as best a treatment as is possible under the war conditions. And uh, to take women as slaves and then sell them uh, as slaves or to use them as concubines today uh, is, is unacceptable given these international conventions. And uh, Muslims should freely enter into such conventions because they're a benefit to, an, uh, to everyone. We don't treat your prisoners with impunity and, and you don't treat our prisoners with impunity. In other words, we, if we take your people as prisoners, we treat them in the most humane and dignified manner possible. Uh, and, and likewise, if you take our prisoners, you treat them the same. It cannot be that we enslave your women and make them concubines, and then you, uh, when you have the, the upper hand, you take our women and enslave them and treat them as concubines. Th this is not what Muslims want, and, and this is not what uh, Islam teaches. Mm -hmm. it, it, Islam teaches the dignity of all people, including and especially uh, of women. Mm -hmm. Now Boko Haram claims that they're, they're going to sell these women and also marry them off. Um, can, can a group marry off girls? Is that possible? Even, even under the strictest of Islamic understandings? Um, obviously, or the most sorry, they, the most traditional. they have a, a twisted interpretation of traditional uh, Islamic understandings. It, it would have been a given in classical Islamic law that uh, if uh, Muslims went to war with non-Muslims, then um, the, the result of the war would be that if Muslims are victorious, they would pick up the spoils of war. Um, uh, all of the equipment that were dr uh, left behind, the swords and the shields and, and the spears and, and the arrows and bows and all of that, but also the personnel. They would take the personnel as, uh, as prisoners, as may happen in, uh, in, in, at the end of any war. But in those days, the, 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 there was not a developed uh, prison system to deal with prisoners of war, and uh, prisoners were taken in as, as slaves, and then the women were taken as captives and then allotted 
uh, to the male soldiers to and are sold on the open market. If they were allotted to a male soldier, it was uh, taken for granted that the male soldier would then have uh, access to her sexually. Um, as though she were a wife, but the difference that she is not free to leave. Mm -hmm. um, uh, whereas uh, in normal circumstances, a woman would have her own status as a free person. Uh, so, so that would have been traditional Islamic law, but that law itself would not have allowed for Muslims to wantonly go outside of a context of battle and just go and seize uh, girls at a school or women in the market or in any other context. Uh, th this was uh, specifically a, a result of a war when not only the women but also the males were taken captive. The, the whole society was done for basically and absorbed uh, into the Muslim society. And of course the reverse would have happened as well. If the non-Muslims were victorious, they would have taken uh, the, the Muslim populace under their captivity and similar sorts of treatments. In fact, worse treatments uh, might have entailed mm -hmm. uh, for the Muslims who were taken as prisoners of war. So in, in, in every way, uh, given the circumstances at the time, Islam uh, should shine uh, as, as the best example of its time. So in our present time, we should ask, what is the best example that we need to give as Muslims? The kind of humanitarian treatment that is given to uh, not only prisoners of war, but to people in general, to even animals, our concern for the uh, environment, all of this should register in our psyche as Muslims in the present time. And to go back to a classical interpretation of things sometimes is to reverse uh, the development and progress uh, of the human mind that is shaped by our vast experience through history and learning of, of various uh, subjects. And, and to top it all off, what they are applying here is not even the traditional Islamic law, but a twisted mm -hmm. interpretation that gives them the, the, the leeway that they desire, whereas Islamic law would never have allowed for them to go capture women wantonly like this. They have gone and they have done precisely so, that. So maybe then we shouldn't even bother discussing this because you know this is not an Islamic issue. This seems like you know just a renegade renegade group just doing whatever they wish. The and difficulty putting an Islamic uh, you know wrapping over over what they're doing. A and this is where the difficulty arises for us in that when a group like this claims to speak on behalf of Islam and they use traditional Islamic terms and they quote verses from the Quran and they say that they are trying to set up an Islamic state. It it, it uh, at first glance uh, one gets the impression that uh, here we have a group that is seriously applying I Islam and if other people disagree with them perhaps they don't have the right interpretation of Islam. So now this becomes a matter of public debate. Uh, we, we need to address this as an issue. Non-Muslims uh, uh, looking at the actions of this group may think yeah here are these people quoting Quran, speaking Arabic. Um, it, it must be that they know what they're talking about and they're trying to represent Islam and that is the real Islam and we have to come out and say no that's wrong that's not real Islam Th they're, they're hijacking uh, the proper understanding of Islam they're misrepresenting our faith uh, that is not Islam and in fact uh, we, we, we do not condone but we totally condemn uh, the, their actions in capturing these girls and keeping them in captivity and then boasting that they will marry them off or sell them. I appreciate your insights Dr. Shapiro. I thank you. You're welcome. We're going to take a break. When we return, we will answer questions we received from you, our viewers. <laughs>